I had a very mad, mad one about five years ago. Um, my mum's father, so my, my granddad's brother, mm. uh, got in contact with my mum and said, so, you know, word through the grapevine, does graffiti. Um, he's out there painting, he's, he's, he's doing pieces. We've heard that he's done a few commission bits. He's obviously very into it. Mm. Um, does he know about Sam? And my mum was like, oh, my God. You know, I think it, it maybe even skipped her mind because it had been such a long time well, ago. Who's Sam? Basically, he was a graph artist. And I think to the degree of... I mean, I've got his book here. And me yeah, and Kelly so have been looking at the, Yeah, uh, if you're um, listening and not watching, uh, just switch your screen on now. But he, he did this in 1989. Um, it was one of the last things that he painted before he um, he passed away. Um, it's got old school score pieces. They're all dated from 1989 as well. So I know he was physically out there with his camera taking pictures. And, and he, he definitely was part of the graffiti culture to the point where I'd say, you know, he had graffiti friends. He It was a big part of his life. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what his tag was. I don't know how prolific or not prolific he was. I don't know who he used to write with. I don't know what crew he used to knock about with, but um, it was definitely something that I've just always wanted to know a little bit more about him as a person and, and about his life. So I was hoping, obviously, if I send you the photo and we can, um, we yeah. can get that up, if anyone recognises Sam. We'll, or, we'll get that up now. Yeah, if, anyone, uh, if any, anyone's got a story about him or any information about painting with him or just anything that you can give me, I would be so intrigued just to know about this family member's life and um, know a little bit more about his graffiti as well. So comment so, below if you know any intel on this. What's his name again one more time? So yeah, Sam, Sam Woodrow. And he, Sam uh, Woodrow. He's from, originally from West Straight and he lived in uh, Blossom Way. So South West London. Streetculturetv.com <laughs> Instagram UK Frontline. Fox created. Killer Coward. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Coward podcast. Nice, bro. Again, big ups and uh, thanks very much for this opportunity, bro. So it's definitely still a li feels a little bit surreal still this morning. This one's going to be an important one, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Coward podcast live and direct, central London, as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. That's a fact, baby boy. Um, <laughs> Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hodder Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Hold tight to everyone that's got the Calavision app. It's still operational, still out there for your street culture sports. Android, iPhone, free download. What more do you need? Uh, mini docs, big docs, DJ Mixes and then the Tourist Podcast. We're still here. We're here. We've got a very special show today. One with a multiple... Uh, amount of uh, reasons for this gentleman being here. Berkshire is ref definitely representing and in the house without question. We've got some historical references, timelines, fault lines, and more with this gentleman. He goes by the name of Last. What are you saying? Big up, Keller. Big up, Keller. Uh, absolutely honoured and kind of starstruck to be on this situation. But yes, yeah, great opportunity, mate. Thank you very much for having me on and uh, letting me tell my story. So yeah, it's, it's funny sometimes when I start the introduction and without too much intensity, I just go down it and just throw it out there. I, I, I sometimes I kind of feel the sense of the guys next to me sitting, yeah, sitting there going, oh, oh my, my days, what is going on right now? You know, I'm just a guy that's, that holds a rattle can um, on the weekends, but yeah. <laughs> I'm humbled and it's a lot of fun and I really appreciate you passing through. What's going on, Big my up, brother? Bro. Big what's up, happening? What, what do you know? What's the, what's the gossip? Big up, bro. Big up. Well, um, yeah, we've had a good weekend. Mm. Uh, got some bits done on Friday. Don't want to say too much about that. Can't say too much because there's secret squirrels. Yeah, we've got a uh, we've got big episode coming out with that one. Big ups yeah. to Sleaf as well. Yeah, big, big ups to up Sleaf inside the place. Come on. So I thought I'd say, to start it off with, I mean, big up to, uh, to Stair CD. Because without Stair CD, yeah. the top OG, uh, yeah. none of this would have been sort yeah. of made to happen as well. For so. real. Big ups do on cancer stairs yeah, big up do on cancer as well um, very much in in uh, in our thoughts at the moment and this uh, this event we did which we're going to keep under wraps for at least actually probably come out around the same time as this that'd be yeah, handy wouldn't I was it say they'll they'll, they'll co align and everything will kind of uh, make a little bit more sense when the two podcasts yeah, come that's out that's a really so. good point we'll keep it uh, on an, an anonymity level at the moment but you'll probably see something in a yeah, due definitely, court definitely. <laughs> that's what they were talking about yeah, yeah. oh okay yeah the uh, the ramblings at the beginning make sense yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly we don't date we're evergreen over here um how oh, was nice your journey? Man. Berkshire. Let's talk about Reading crew. Yeah. Let's talk Bo about winners. Boogie down, Boogie down Berkshire, man. Big up all the Berkshire UK. Crew. So uh, I've been an avid watcher of the podcast. Um, you've had some absolute local legends from our way over. Mm. So um, big up Baps, big up Atcross. Mm. Um, and there's too many to name. Wrench. Where Wrench, Wrenchy Wrench as well. Yo, now you, you you said something to me the other day about Wrench. Big up Wrench. Big up Wrench. Um, he's, he's a bit of a, 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 a local legend, isn't he, for you guys? I think anyone that, I mean... I'll, for the I'll, UK. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll say for now, I kind of grew up between Bratton and Wokenham, 
sort of area. Mm. Um, but Reading or Winnish Winnish Triangle Hall of Fame, which I spend t- way too many hours of my Incredible. life at. Incredible. <laughs> um, uh, that place and Long Hill Skate Park as well, which I've got a shout out. That was definitely the uh, the foundations for me picking up a can of spray paint. But I mean, being 14 years old and there being uh, Jano, Verge, Wrench, NT Productions, Jabs, um, Big Arrow. Up Lotus as well. Lotus was a, a big writer from our way that I think a lot of people took a lot of inspiration from that's still in the game now, still putting up some absolutely amazing outlines and hard letters. Um, oh, mate, these are legendary names. But yeah, I mean, how lucky were we that we would walk into that skate park and, you know, the weekend before they'd done a brand new full wall production and you'd walk in and that would be the first thing that you saw before you got your cans out of your bag and... <sighs> Yeah, inspired by some of the best, you know? Dude. Yeah, definitely. So where did it begin for you, brother? Where did it begin? So, uh, yeah, I mean, for all of those that know me that are watching this one, I'm going to try and not to, uh, to tangent too hard. Comment below. I, uh, yeah, the tangent king, definitely up in the building on this yeah. one. So, uh, <laughs> he's, yeah, really, I was he's restraining himself. Restraining myself from going this way, this way, this way. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, I thought I'd start at the beginning. So I'd say Long Hill Skate Park, um, the Ascot Hall of Fame, which I think a lot of guys will be familiar with, which was kind of like an overspill, like a a drainage system that was on the outside of like a factory or like a a building that was on the back of Ascot, uh, like near the station. Oh man, was that the one that was in um, Visual Graphics? Yeah, yeah. So that was like an original Hall of Fame that, I mean, when we first got into it and I was just putting up throw ups and tags and learning how to use a can of spray paint, they were the places that I would go down and, you know, there'd be like a brand new wrench piece down there or um, a big up Desta as well. Desta is definitely yeah, a legend from our way. Desta, there we go. Um, but yeah, Keep first, them names coming on. We, yeah, we need man, to I, hail mean, up. I, would, uh, I would say to, to shout out my original mentors or the people that I kind of looked up to, uh, Desta, Emco, Orphan. Um, don't know if anyone knows where Emco's whereabouts is. He kind of dropped off of our scene maybe like 10 years ago. Mm. Um, but the reason that I paint characters or the reason that I've been known as the character guy was uh, sort of spending hours staring at his characters and the neat lines and straight lines and clean bands on everything. But um, yeah, Emco, Orphan uh, from WNC crew, they were massive influence nice. to me. Um, Desta, Jabs, uh, I mean, Arrow, Wrench, Lotus. Mm. Um, the, the NT crew, all the mm. Reading crew, um, Big Up Doc as well. He's a, a, a big name from RIA. Do you remember Skez? Yeah, I remember Skez as well, yeah. yeah. That's good man. Yeah, man, That's he would definitely man. be big up. Skez. He had a, a definite few over in the Ascot places mm-hmm. over um, like the Winnish Hall of Fame and that kind mm-hmm. of area as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it was, funnily enough, I mean, I'll be honest about it, uh, I'd wait till they finished painting <laughs> and then I would go in the bins at Long Hill Skate Park and if there was anything left with a shudder of a Montana or a bit of Belton or maybe a couple of hardcores that hadn't been used, that they were my first cans of paint that I used so How used. old did you been right at that? I think 13, 14, yeah, first year of secondary school. Um, and so cute. That's so Yeah, endearing, you right? know, I was too scared to approach him, too scared to talk to him because a lot of them were like grown men and I was still a teenager, you know, so yeah. it was... You didn't want to be that kid hanging around like a bad smell, bothering. Oh, how'd you do that, mate? Yeah. And well, what's that called? And what? Caps and you're a bit too young to go and get the paint. That's yeah, thing. you know. And I remember asking my parents for the first time, "Oh, would, would you go and buy me six cans of spray paint?" And them being like, "No, hell no. You know, you're not even 15 years old yet." Did and they we say know, that? yeah. My mum just being like, no, "I know exactly what the, where that's going. No, if you want to get paint, then you ask your friends to get you paint." And I was like, "Okay, fair enough." So that was at the real early young part of it you know where you were didn't still say you couldn't do it though did they they said she, she get someone never else to do it. And big up to mum but she uh she never discouraged me she just kind of said i'm not going to be part of the, the part of the problem i'm just going to see it unfold when maybe that does become a problem you know so yeah she she kept it very real but she never discouraged me um but yeah i think the the starter pack was the hardcores the the montana blacks and montana golds that the big guys used to leave behind uh, and then going to a shop, um, big up Playground Legends in Reading. Uh, Playground called, Legends? Playground Legends in the All Harris right. Arcade, man. They were the kind of graph hub for Berkshire for a long time where it doesn't matter where you came from, what right you were. Where yeah. have I been? Wait, how so um, you, you came out of Reading Station yeah. and then um, as you're walking up to the Burger King, I don't know if you know Reading. So, yeah, there's the parade. Little yeah, parade. the little parade. That's where I get my cigars, you see. Uh, yeah, as I say, there's a nice, <laughs> nice tobacco shop in there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. So um, it was a little walkthrough and uh, it was, I mean, the shop was probably about the size of the studio that we're doing mm-hmm. in right now, you know, and it had one rack of hardcores. You had a load of Beltons. They'd sell like sort of Air Max and Dunks and had a few sort of graph T-shirts. And uh, I, I think, always thought about in there as being a great place for this. Yeah. Sort of thing. It actually you know, happened. It, yeah, it actually happened. I think, I mean, I don't want to quote on this because they were before my time. Mm. And then I kind of got into that when they were already sort of fully pledged. Okay. But 
there was an artist um, that worked behind the shop, big up Rob. Rob was always our uh, our go-to guy about good walls to go and find and places to get up and go and paint as well. He always kind of gave us the information. And, big up Rob. Um, big up Rob, man. He was always spinning vinyl in there and spinning records as well and playing good music. So, Yo, yeah, it was, it was a whole of you know? HQ. They had their clothes, they had their paint, they had their, uh, they had their tunes on, but it was kind of a place that you could go in as a toy and they'd say to you, okay, these caps do this. Make you a man. This, yeah, you know, they gave us the insight. This is a fat cap. This is a stock cap. And I think before that, it was kind of this is a cap that yeah. fits the paint that I've got. I had no knowledge of anything to do with that, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, big up to Playground Legends. And uh, I'd say big up to Higher Level in Maidenhead as well. They were another big shop. Um, I think it was a smoking shop that just used to stock hardcores. Um, but you'd have to say to him, like, have you got paint? And then he'd show you whatever he had behind the basket. But he definitely didn't have an age limit on who was allowed to buy paint, which for us, sort of 15, 16 year olds, at the time that was a that was a big thing you know levels um and i think the other one that a few people have told me to not mention uh, to not forget to mention as well was uh there was a pound land opposite Reading station <laughs> and uh i know i'm way too young to be of the era of racking yeah. but i didn't even know what racking was when we were doing this but it was a case of playground legends Two cans of black hardcore, two cans of white hardcore. The rest of the colours across the road. And yeah, the rest of the colours <laughs> across the road. Sainsbury's bag, I think they used to have like whites, blacks, chromes. Um, but it was all like metallic car mm, paint, you know, mm, and it was just whatever I couldn't afford with my bus money that I'd save from the week to buy spray paint with, we'd go into Poundland and get everything else that we couldn't pay for. See, you know? resourcefulness, so, see? The, the, the parents, they, they don't realise the kind of initiative they're installing in kids. Definitely. I think it is... Um, I'm going to have to shout out one lady. Big up to, uh, to Shirley, my nan. Um, she, big up, Shirley. She was the one that I don't think you realised that you needed to be 18 to sort of buy aerosols. I think her concept of all of that was definitely a little bit more far-fetched than my parents. And uh, I think her thing was, you know, if you do a car wash this week, you do a paper round, or you earn a bit of money this week, whatever you get, I'll match it. And if you want me to come to the paint shop and buy your paint for you, I'll, I'll come into the shop and actually nans buy it. Nans so. so the enablers. Big up, big up the nans, man. Yeah, Always yeah, the enablers, big up the nans. It, so. My nan did the same thing for me with records. Big up nans. Nans, are the, they should be preserved, kept and cuddled forever. Big up the nans. Definitely. Always trying to encourage you to uh, to use your creative outlet, even if you're out there uh, damaging the yeah. system while you're doing it. Mean, so, yeah. To be fair, you know why that is? It's because they know that they can give back to your mum when you're gone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Like, well, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not my responsibility. He lives with you. Yeah. 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 I, just, I just enable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Have him back. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So true, man. So true. So, um, yeah, I'd say kind of from... The Long Hill days, looking up to the writers that were going around the scene then, big ups to Desta, big up to Jabs, big up to, to Lotus. They were sort of three writers and Emco as well that without them doing their letter shapes, their fills their, and Emco doing his character styles, that was from not having such a big scene like London, having those little pockets like those little skate parks and having such big writers. I mean, weirdly, I, when I first got into it, I thought that like painting a... a a, a level of like arrow or desta that was the that's the standard mm. if you're a graffiti writer you paint like that and then mm -hmm. you realize that they're they're top shelf material yeah, and that's what you aim for yeah so i think big up to them because there's a lot of writers in Berkshire that i think i i i adore arrow man yeah i rate him so highly i think that, that what, he, what he does is just yeah speaks. i mean for, for someone like myself who's very heavily into the character bit as well as the the letters and mm. so a lot of people that are watching this i know that my letters are still very toy and it's an absolute wonder that i've ended up on this podcast but what are you talking about hold on uh, breaks <laughs> wait a minute hold on. Oh, what do you mean <laughs> my letter style has what? changed so much over like the last sort of five years because of the influence um but i'd say that a lot of people say to me you're a mix of cholo tattoo and wild style mix match together. And but I, that's why I rate it. But then maybe, as I've said to a lot of people, I don't have a style that you could say he looks like somebody else or he's got this influence because nah. there's about 50 writers behind those letters that have Merged made me want to curl those L's or make an S sharp or yeah. make a fade come in or, you know, but I definitely don't have a very conventional UK kind of graffiti style. But I think that might be the mixture of like the Berkshire influence rather than London mm. and then getting back into graph, which I'll go into in Australia as well. They've got a very different style to the UK. So I think my letter style is very mixed mash of, a load of people that I've looked up to, which is why a lot of writers that I've painted with have been like, can't quite work out the convention on your letters, but they're unique, which I suppose if you can take anything, they're, they are what they are. You Telling know, you, so. bro, like, when I see your... I mean, and this is the other thing. When you have it up against, like, a Hall of Fame, like, like Winner's Triangle, it's like... That's a very high bar to try and yeah. uh, take influence and try and yeah. kind of keep up with in there. Yeah, definitely. I mean... 
I've done a couple of things in there, and I just well, every time I just walk away thinking to myself, man, fucking, it's almost like it's it's like it's an exhibition. House it is, it is, yeah. Fame. I so mean, when it, you when you when I see your stuff, I genuinely hand on heart, I'm like, you're just on a level. Oh, thank you very much. That, that's, that's very humbling, man. I really appreciate. It's that. in that ballpark, you know. No, thank you. And I mean, as we're, I'm gonna jump out along here, jump back into Winnish, and then I kind of go to some other places with it. But I'd say. The, the people that are at Winnersh now, are, when I first got back from Australia about uh, five or six, well, nearly five years ago, mm. um, I remember walking down to the Hall of Fame and I, I wasn't 100% whether it was still active because I hadn't lived in the UK for six years. So mm. I'd kind of fallen out of the, the UK graffiti scene, got back into it in Australia. And when I came back, you know, I knew that there was still a few walls at Long Hill you could paint it. Mm. It definitely uh, deteriorated a little bit since the last time I painted there and there wasn't quite as much wood on the wall to go and paint, mm. but it was still rolling. But um I got to Winnersh and I remember uh, Big Up Samer for this one, but there was... Big Up Samer? Big Up Samer. Man, Big Up Samer. It's, it's crazy that we've got such a local legend so available yeah, yeah, to go and see their pieces every weekend, yeah, you know. Yeah, and uh, one of the nicest guys in Graf as yeah, well, yeah. without a doubt. But um, I remember seeing this Samer and Coma production. I think mm. a lot of people will know this one. And you had the uh, the, the two toucan birds and then a yeah. larger bird in the middle. And it was, I, yeah. I had never seen anything of that calibre at Winnersh um, since maybe the NT days where they used to do the big mm -hmm. uh, NT productions with like the military backgrounds and the tanks. But oh, I just remember. Mr. T and shit. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> just uh, some of the things that those guys painted in that era. And you'd walk down there and be like, no one will ever paint over this. Yeah. And, and then, you know, months later, they would paint over it. And I'd be like, oh my God, the, the, the so and so walls They're going on. That wall. Yeah, owning they, that wall. they used to own those walls, man. But. Um, Coma, who I know is maybe taking a bit of a break from Graf at the moment, big but um, big, big up Coma. Uh, Coma, Sema, uh, Dime, Jewel, Dash, the TZC crew. Um, just seeing those walls in the flesh when I got back from Australia gave me such a G up to be like, yeah. okay, the UK scene's still got some real big people that are really yeah. dedicated to this and coming out every really weekend and painting. Popping. And yeah, like you said, just paint on those walls for the first couple of months with their stuff around, you know, and you can't help it. You'll be looking at people's fills and looking at band colours mm. they've done and stuff. And there's just so much inspiration there for you mm. to get excited about. And then, um, you know, th th these guys would walk down and be like, oh, you're right, man. Like, and because it's a very tight knit there and there's yeah. not too many writers. Small scene. Very small scene. You know, why, but... is it, why is it that small scenes incubate such a level of intense creative stamina like with i guess there's an a there's a, a lack of abundance isn't there yeah, yeah so you really you 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 will kind of galvanize a little bit more and you you nurture definitely and i, I think if you're a if you're a heavy hitter from a small town so like big up wrench uh big up verge your name travels so much quicker because on our track sides you're only going to see that maybe 30 writers that are in that area. Mm. And if someone is shining to the level that they are, it really does set that bar high for everybody else that's paying in Berkshire. You know, you're like, I don't, I remember being, I don't want to put anything out that anyone's going to see until I'm at a, my, my throw ups are a little bit cleaner or my, my hand style is a little bit less yeah. toy than it was at the beginning, you know, because I wouldn't want those people to see my early stuff. And then that be your, your representation. You almost wanted to hide behind, garden fences and down the back of train lines mm. on walls that people weren't going to see and get some stuff up till yeah. you felt comfortable that you know maybe lotus is going to see one of my pieces or one of my tags down at a hall of fame or at long hill skate park or because they all the, see it because they all see it you know and the nicest thing about it is you were almost painting as much for yourself but for the people that you know would you know this is the days where we had like nokia 6210s might <laughs> drop you a text message on a saturday saying just saw your new one at redding skate park big up bro you know yeah, but yeah. That, that was like the biggest oh, limited like, letters i'm here yeah, come yeah yeah literally <laughs> Literally, literally. <laughs> so, um, Phone low bat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. Or you have 22p credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that'd cost you 10p to read, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know how the hustle was back in the day to get yeah. somewhere, man. Yeah, Whoa. man. I don't think any of us had credit back in the day. Phone boxes were still definitely in action, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep, keeping a fiver in the back of the phone, yeah. That's right. But, um, so yeah, no, big up the Winnish crew, big up the, uh, the Bratnell crew, Ascot crew. Oh. Um, Again, another spot, Cavisham Skate Park uh, over in Reading before that place changed. The um, the big original red wall that used to run round. Um, big up to Desta, big up to Jabs, uh, OMG crew, TPK crew, um, AR crew, another rinse. Mm. They were one of the first boys that decided that um, I wasn't that toy and that they'd take me out, go and do a few track sides and walk me down when I was about 14, 15 years old. Mm. So big up to the guys that kind of took a chance on the, the the character kid that was definitely by himself for the first sort of two, three years painting, you know. Oh, so, yeah. go on. But, um, yeah, characters, man. let's talk about characters because you, 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 
to, to your own credit, you said that you know this is something that you you perfected early doors, and it was due to the the, the watching of people. Yeah, I'd, the I'd say were. the the Emco characters, um, the Arrow characters. Uh, there was a guy called Flo um, that used to write for um, AR. Mm. Um, that was living around our way as well. Big up to Flo, he's still in KDS, the crew that I write with at the moment. Um, but seeing them do the cartoon characters that I'd sort of, you know, I've, I've been sketching in. My parents' thing was when we go out for a family dinner, you know, children should be seen, not heard a little bit. Not not saying that you were like that, mum and dad, but, you know, there was a little bit of that going on. It's adult time now. We're at a nice restaurant. We're on holiday. The, the pen and pencil would get given to me and I would sit there doing the, the Looney Tunes or the anime oh, or, you know, that was... Before graph was even something that my brain could cap- comprehend so or I'd seen thing, it, yeah. I'd say that the, the sketching of characters and copying comic book characters and um, endless Looney Tunes, you know, my parents, I'm very, very big up to mom and dad for that one, but they gave me the Looney Tunes VHS box set from age seven or eight. Dude, you know, I had that, that big up. Yeah, big Elmer Fudd, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, all Wiley Coyote, boxes, yeah, yeah, you know, and they'd all have their own D, their own VHS with that was just Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner or just Bugs Bunny. Game Changers. Or, Oh, those, those cartoons still to this day, I mean, everyone knows me for that because I've never been able to stop drawing them. But yeah. I think... What's it with tigers? Yeah, so people, they've asked me about that one. Um, the, the the big thing with the, the Lion King thing, which I do get a lot from a lot of people, because I think for a lot of people when they're like, oh, bro, a bit cheesy on the character was... If I could take something like Lion King, which is probably perceived as one of the cheesiest Disney cartoons on road, yeah, yeah, and take those characters that I grew up watching. So I think the the Lion King was the you know the first kids video that if every time I got sick or sent home from nursery or sent home from school, my parents would bang on Lion King, and I'd watch that video relentlessly. You know, it was just the one that you loved when you were a kid. Mm. And I think when I first got into sketching or first got into sketching graffiti characters. Um, I wanted to take my favourites from that era and kind of dirty them up a little bit and see to if To the point I... they don't actually look like Lion Kings, it looks like your own yeah, adaptation. Yeah, a few of... people have said to me they're kind of like if the Lion King cast went out on a bender at Fabric that weekend, what they would look like on the <laughs> Sunday after, you know? So that's kind of the, the, right, the, the, the image that I've kind of gone through with a lot of the characters. So if you can take something that is a little bit tongue-in-cheek and a little bit cheesy, mm. how, how can I stick him in a five-panel or... How can I put him in a graph uniform or how can mm. I get him on the beers or have, have a Jay hanging out of his mouth or something that's going to kind of twist the storyline of like, isn't that Scooby-Doo? But, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So Yeah, 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 yeah. It's try- cool. Come, you know, just cred- Yeah, just cred. kind of give it a bit of cred almost. Yeah, Credibility, exactly. Yeah. So I thought if you can do that with Lion King, which is definitely one of the cheesiest, then well, maybe... How do you do it? I would, uh, in the beginning, it would, a lot of them would be steals uh, from the DVD or the VHS because... It's weird with a lot of the cartoons that they have the same 10 images on, say, like Google or Pinterest of like the the character profile or the character head on or them talking to another character. Mm. But I would always find that the best drawings or the best outlines that I would want to copy would be from the TV show. Yeah. So I would have to pause the TV show. I mean, my mum said to me once, you're going to burn a hole in our telly if you keep pausing yeah, it and just yeah. sitting there drawing off the TV, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the old TVs, yeah. that if you had something running dick, for a couple dick, of dick, hours, dick, and it'd dick, start, dick, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really jolting as really well. Really jolty, yeah. <laughs> Flickering to the point I where she was like, that. I'm going to have Scar on the TV screen <laughs> for the next two months, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I used to sit there and find the Daffy Duck in the the expression that I most liked him in or find mm. the Bugs Bunny in the... There was always one that he did with the um, with Marvin the Martian and he's on a piano. Mm. Um, I remember a couple of times being like, God, are they piano keys that have been left on the telly from where those white cubes have been oh, up for about four it. hours oh, whilst I was God. sketching it? Really? Yeah, <laughs> but, um, yeah I, I remember that was the first, <laughs> the, the first way of sketching it. I'd actually just pause the VHS, sit there with a the sketchbook, copy the basic outline. I'd, I'd never do anything colour. It was always like black and white or um, like grey gray and white pencil. And then I would take that down to the skate park and, okay, I'm going to try and get his beak the same shape and then I'm going to try and get the expression in the eyes. And, you know, but it it kind of all came from just being absolutely obsessed with, like, animation and and cartoons as a kid, you know. And I think my thing was seeing artists... um, I mean, again, Arrow, he he can take a, a Disney character, you know, he's renowned for it, like the Mickey Mouses and... Fuck with it. But he fucks with it to a point where it's like, you know who that is, mm. but you almost prefer his version to the Disney version. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like Facts. Facts, yeah. So True. he um, he was a big inspiration in terms of taking something that is, but remixing that or remastering that in your own style. You know, a lot of people, I think, um, across said to me recently, like, 
even though you're taking other people's characters and doing your own thing with it, it always comes out in your style, which for me is a huge compliment because mm. it's, I don't want it to look exactly like I the agree. original, you know, I, I want it to be my version of these people that like I grew I up to. to the point that it doesn't quite look, you almost like you get a look into it and you think that it's recognisable as that thing, but it's just, yeah, switched. yeah, it's just got a bit of a switch up on it. So Which is exactly uh, I, I take that as a huge compliment. And as a note to Arrow's processes. Of yeah, exactly, man. Without these guys showing me that you could take something that you were really into and sort of glam it mm. up in your own style a little bit, um, I don't know whether I would have been as comfortable to start putting stuff that was already a branded image mm. on the wall, you know? Mm. So I'm definitely trying to get more into my own shapes, my own characters, my own, my own styles, but... Um, it's one of those things I think even in 10 years' time, man, someone will go, oh, should we do a Daffy production today? Yeah, let's do a yeah, Daffy production. Yeah, you know, I, I love it too much. It's too much in the soul to, uh, mm -hmm. for me to ever stop painting that, you know? But, yeah, definitely. It's... Um, before we get into Australia, because we do have to get into Australia, big up the Australia big crew. Big up the Aussie crew, man. We see you, brother. You know, I wouldn't leave you out. <laughs> we see you, brothers. We see you. Um, I want to get into this. If you're looking at camera two, Kels, if you flick it over to Kelly, camera two, thank you. There's a book. That's to your your right, my yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've been uh, I definitely didn't know that I'd be able to be on this platform to have the opportunity to maybe uh, get a bit of information about this one. But uh, I had a very mad, mad one about five years ago. Um, my mum's father, so my my granddad's brother, mm. uh, got in contact with my mum and said, "So you know, word through the grapevine does graffiti." Um, he's out there painting, he's, he's, he's doing pieces. We've heard that he's done a few commission bits. He's obviously very into it. Mm. Um, does he know about Sam? And my mum was like, oh, my God. You know, I think it, it maybe even skipped her mind because it had been such a long time well, ago. who's Sam? So, firstly, his name is Sam Woodrow. Um, he's from West Strayton, sort of Uxbridge area. Um, I think they used to live... Oh, I, Blossom Way. Blossom Way was the name of the street that they used to live in, West Strayton. And Sam unfortunately passed away about two months or two or three months before I was born. So, yeah, 1990, um, which is, you know, I never had the opportunity to meet him. I've only ever heard his name in passing sort of family events yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and people bringing him up. But, um, yeah, rest in peace, Sam. He died yeah, way too young. Rest in peace, Sam. Wow. Um, but the, the craziest one was he basically he was a graph artist. And I think to the degree of, I mean, I've got his book here. Me yeah, and Kelly so have been looking you're, at Yeah, the, uh, if you're um, listening and not watching, uh, just switch your screen on now. Um, so yeah, I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you put that so, one. So uh, maybe he'll be with this one. So, so yeah, I'll um, i basically explain. So his his sister uh, got in contact with myself because he had put a uh, a homage to Dell, uh, big up Dell boy. That's his dad, um, on their outside garage fence, and he basically said, look, he, he did this in 1989. Um, it was one of the last things that he painted before he um he passed away would you come and give it a once over and, and fill in the letters again for me and put the outline back on there and put, uh, put his tag back over the tag so he, he still had this memory. Yeah. And, um, you know, I thought it might, might have been like a lot of things where in the late 80s where graffiti was so popular, he, he'd kind of picked up a can for the first couple of times. But he, um, he then gives me this book that's got cast pieces. Um, it's got old school score pieces. They're all dated from 1989 as well. So I know he was physically out there with his camera taking pictures and and putting this stuff into his books and documenting the graph scene at that time. This the, so this is the only book you've got? So this is the only book I've got, yeah. And it's, it's got some of t Sam's tags, um, some photographs, as I said, of like cast pieces, score pieces. Um, but after speaking to my mum and to speaking to Sam's sister, he didn't give a lot of information to the family about what he was getting up to. And I think it was a, an era where they kind of knew what he was getting up to, but they didn't want to ask too many questions. Yeah. Um, but there were stories of, you know, he coming in at two, three o'clock in the morning with bags of paint, always having people in the garden with boards setting up and practicing their hand styles and tagging. And, and he, he definitely was part of the graffiti culture to the point where I'd say, you know, he had graffiti friends. He, it was a big part of his life. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what his tag was. I don't know how prolific or not prolific he was. I don't know who he used to write with. I don't know what crew he used to knock about with, but, um, where it's so interconnected in my life and how it's such a mad thing that, you know, I, I was I was made the year that he was taken. It was um it was definitely something that I've just always wanted to know a little bit more about him as a person and, and about his life. So I was hoping obviously if I send you the photo and we can um we yeah. can get that up if anyone recognizes Sam we'll or get that up now. Yeah, if anyone uh if any anyone's got a story about him or any information about painting with him or just Anything that you can give me, I would be so intrigued just to know about this family member's life and um, know a little bit more about his graffiti as well. So comment so, below if you know any intel on this. What's his name again one more time? So yeah, Sam, Sam Woodrow. And he, Sam uh, Woodrow. He's from, originally from West Strait and he lived in uh, Blossom Way. So southwest London. Southwest London, Blossom yeah. Way. 
So yeah, man. But yeah, big up the Australian crew. Big up. I know Atros is kind of from that over that way, yeah. and he, he tried to do some digging for me as well, which I really appreciated. But yeah, anyone that's got any information about it, it'd just be something for me to nice to know, you know. And I kind of see prosperity. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, from someone, it, it's such a niche thing, graffiti. There's there's not that many people that kind of get as addicted into it as a lot of us do. And yeah. to have this guy that was actually a family member be part of that, and then find out about that sort of like 15, 20 years later was. Yeah, it was it was mad. It was a mad you experience. know what's? I mean, technology is way different. Even having the podcast is a blessing, but um, to, I don't know, man, this book represents one person over twenty years ago. Exactly, you more know. than twenty years ago. Yeah, so he, thirty yeah, he years ago. Thirty years ago now, yeah. So, and the fact that okay, to some writers, that's the kind of exclusivity they want. But um, if you hadn't have been given this. Yeah, you, you know, there would be absolutely nothing. Exactly, and I, I know that when um, Across was talking about T's coming on here and doing his podcast, it's one of those things where you've given a platform for people like myself that maybe for the last three, four years since I found out about Sam, yeah. the only connection that I had was messaging a few people that I knew that are from West Strait and from Uxbridge area that might have been around in that scene. Yeah. Um, but you think, you know, if there was 60 kids knocking around painting in that era and he only knew three or four of them, I know yeah. that I come from a very small crew of people. Yeah unless you can get in contact with one of those very rare people that might have known him, it's so hard to find out people's history. And yeah. unless there is someone out there that's got a book of his work where they used to go and paint together, but I've never had this opportunity to have a, a midway or a, mm. a, a sort of, you know, there, there being a connection between my life and his life through these other people. So I'm really hoping, uh, crossed, really, really, really hoping that someone could come through on that one. That, that would honestly make my year. So, so um, yeah, so go into the recesses on my 80s crew, you know, UK 80s crew. Of uh, yeah, of this gentleman here, yeah. Sam Wood. Sam Woodrow. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah, uh, yeah send it up, man. Get get the comments below or hit us up DM. DM that shit. Yeah, no, I'd really appreciate that. Um. So, so Australia was calling. Yeah. So calling I'd, in. I'd say, I mean, t to jump the timeline, I'd say from being the 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids running around with a bag of car paint and hardcores and anything that he could get his hands on. Um, there was a few moments with a few writers. I won't bring up the full story on that one because I've, I've been told to keep my mouth shut. But there, Why? Was a, <laughs> there was a few incidents that happened where I maybe wasn't as experienced as the people that were taking me out painting. And I got a few people into a few uh, rocky situations from being a, being a loud mouth at the time. Definitely still a loud mouth, but definitely more of a loud mouth then. Um, but yeah, I, I basically, long story short, kind of fell out of graph. Uh, I think I'd... I'd kind of just got to a point where I wasn't doing anything other than throw ups and tags and the characters I was doing uh, were just at Long Hill. You know, I wasn't mm. getting my name out there enough. I think a, mm. a lot of the people that I was painting with, um, big up Zerk, big up Doc, mm. um, big up Topski, Flo, Sev, all the guys that kind of first took me on my first ever paint missions. Man, you know they, all these names, that's crazy. Oh, I'm very fortunate to have been around such a, a, a talented group of people when I first got into it, you know. So Man, you got mad recall. <laughs> you just You know, I'm I'm here for them more than anything, you know. I feel like I'm I'm kind of here representing the people that showed me what a can of Montana was for the first time. Oh, and yeah, you know, like you gotta represent the people that put you onto it. And I'd I'd say proudly that graffiti is fully my life. It's the first mm. thing I think about in the morning, the last thing I think about mm. at night. I uh I'm obsessed, absolutely obsessed. And it wouldn't be for these people that I wouldn't have this special thing in my life, you know? So mm. you got to, you got to big up the people that put you in the right direction for sure, you know? Sure. So I would say from that era, um, big gap. I lived out in Southeast Asia for three years. Um, it never goes away, you know, I've put, I've put up a few tags and a few bus stations and a few throwies and a few places. Mm. And I think it was kind of like, I'm, I'm in Cambodia or I'm in Laos, or I'm in Thailand. I should definitely put my name on something mm -hmm. because I'm in this foreign land. And that's what we used to do when we were getting the train to Reading. So I'm not going to do that here, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. There, was, there was definitely still the graffiti buzz inside me, but I hadn't been and bought paint for a very long time, about five or six years. Um, and I was in Thailand just about to fly to Australia and... This is where I honestly believe in fate a little bit. So the girl that I was seeing at the time, um, she'd popped out the the, hub, the apartment in, like first thing in the morning to go and get us both an iced coffee and like a cheese and ham toasty from 7-Eleven, I think. Actually. And um, as you do in Thailand, I know a lot of people lived on that diet as well. Mm -hmm. So she um, she comes over to me and says, oh, you're um you're a bit into graffiti, aren't you? You're a bit into street art. And I think she'd seen like a an Obey Shepherd Fairy book that I was reading on one of our bus mm -hmm. trips or something mm -hmm. like that. And um, I said, yeah, yeah, I was, I was really heavily into that when I was a little bit younger. And she was like, did you know there's something called Meeting of Styles going on in Bangkok this weekend? 
And I already remember meeting stuff at the start was from when I was still kind of into it. And I was yeah. like, did you see posters? And she went, no, there's there's artists painting like just off of Kalsan Road. And there's she tables set up with artists and they're signing books. Mate, what? As on that time she said it, so it, and, there was no I'm time like, to waste. And I'm like, where? Which, which street? And she's like, it's on Ramboot Tree. It's two streets back from Kalsan Road. We can be there in 10 minutes. She was, I was like, just, we go, we go. Like, sod the shower, sod packing the bags. We'll pay for another night here because we had to check out at 10 o'clock. Let's just go. I need, to, I need to see who you're talking about. I need to see this thing that you're talking about, you know? So walked out onto the main high street and... Already I can see that there's um, these big boards that they've put up with little tables underneath it. And it is, it's a meeting of styles expo. It's probably one of the first ones I'd ever thrown in Bangkok. Um, if anyone has a poster or has any information about the actual lineup of artists that was on that weekend, I would oh. love to be able to see that yeah, yeah, again yeah. these years later Send just to see who was there. But what? Yeah, the um, the big ones that I kind of remember being there, um, big Thai artist Cloakwork. Um, Cloakwork. You've probably heard of Cloak, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he's done like a series with Montana. Yeah. And again, phenomenal character artist who... He'll take anything that's anything and then do a cloakwork remix of those characters in his style. You know, he's yeah, and, and another one for me to see his stuff in the flesh and be like, oh my God, you know, getting yeah. absolutely star boyed, pa passing around this little black book that I had from <laughs> WH Smith being like, can you put your name on it? Can you put your name on it? You know, star boyed, and, I love it. Yeah, I was so star boyed that day, you know, and um, she said to me, wow, she was like, I, I don't think I've ever seen you get as, uh, as, excited about something reactive yeah or reactive to something since i've known you and we, me and her had known each other for about six months at that point she was like there's definitely something there right and she went why did you stop painting and i was like well you know life happens and traveling happened and you know going out with the friends and fabric happened and getting into mm. music and djing at that point kind of took over graffiti a little bit but she said to me well she was like it's not like you're an old man she was like you could still pick up a can of paint and mm. go and go and get back into it and i was like well Maybe when I get to Australia, I'll go and find a paint shop because it, it definitely given me the G up to be like, you know, I'm going to start sketching again. And mm. after meeting these guys, you know, it it did. It kind of got the juices flowing back in me to, to maybe mm. start paying attention and adding a few writers that I used to like on Instagram and having a look and seeing if people were still painting and that kind of thing. All it and takes then, one or two um, and you just drop straight into the rabbit hole. Yeah, right. I mean, it, uh, this is where I believe it was fate that, that that day was very conveniently supposed to happen in my life where... Yeah from not really thinking too much about it for, for three, four years to walk yeah, yeah. into those writers around me and seeing their stuff in the flesh and actually sitting there and having a bottle of singer and having a conversation with a couple of them as well was very like, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. very similar to this situation, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they, uh, they definitely gave me the thing of, you know, like I remember one of the artists saying to me, um, when you get to Osbro, there's a shop in, in Sydney called 567. There's a guy called Mick, big up Mick, that runs the shop. Um, go and see Mick. Tell him your story, man. Tell him that you want to get back into it. I'm sure that he can do you a deal on some painting there, man. Mm. So there was an artist that uh, kind of put me in the right direction. And um, yeah, I got to Sydney about two weeks later. And this is where I have to do the biggest shout out of the podcast. So there's an artist, uh, Love or Lovely ZFG. Um, I met him as a friend traveling in Thailand. We actually became sort of best friends and traveled on uh, maybe two and a half years of wow. um, being on the islands together, being in the mm. cities together. <clears throat> we both were on a different traveling route. Um, he was out there documenting something and I was out there working. Mm. And he would always find the time to say like, okay, we've got five days off from doing this project. I'm going to come down to Koh Phangan and come see you or I'm going to come to Samui and come meet up with you. But he, big up lovely. Man. Big up lovely, man. You made a big effort for me in the beginning. And um, the craziest thing is for nearly two years, I didn't know he was a writer and he didn't know I was a writer. I knew him as, I'm not going to give you out his real name on the podcast, but Ooh. I knew him as Mr. Smith and he knew me as Mr. Jones. You know, we didn't know <laughs> that he was so-and-so and he was so-and-so. And um, he basically picks, well, actually, I think I got to his apartment after maybe two days of being in Sydney and he uh, he kind of dropped this bit of information. He said, so you told one of our friends, he was like, you graph, yeah? And I was like, well, I used to, yeah. I was actually looking to maybe get back into it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I paint. So he gets his phone out. And I mean, he, at this point, Love had really been on a spree. I think he mm. painted sort of 30 pieces in two months. Oh, I love this. I love that one. All the track right. sides, all these like bridge burners, all these That's electricity blocks. And I'm like, bro, I've seen your stuff in Asia. And he was like, yeah, because you were probably with me the day before I painted it. But you didn't realise that the guy that you were with I was the guy that. that painted it. And I was like, I oh my God, this is that. absolutely mind blowing, you know? And <laughs> he uh, he said, yeah, bro. He was like, it's not just like tagging and stuff. Like I, I do pieces, I do throw ups. And I was like, well, I've got someone to paint with whilst I'm here then. And he was like, well, tomorrow, paint shop. Let's go and do a piece. So he takes me to 567. Um, big up, big up love for this one. He introduced mm. me to... The guys that he knew in the city that were painting, who I was very fortunate with some of the big names in the city at the time mm -hmm. as well. 
Um, he told me, you know, the what's what. Okay, these are the spots that you can paint. Yeah. These are the spots that you don't touch yet because nobody knows who you are. Um, these are the places that we get our paint from. If you need Belton and 94s, we go to this shop. If you need hardcores and golds and blacks, we go to this shop. Um, you know, he, he gave me the inside information that I needed as a, as a new wow. British guy living in Australia and painting for the first yeah. time. And um, yeah, I, I was working in an office five days a week to pay the bills. And I think we used to paint maybe three days a week after work. Um, we'd paint Saturdays on the back of this motorway spot. Um, we'd go to the sort of Hall of Fames and he'd introduce me to other artists on Sundays and like big up the Newtown crew as well. Oh, that Newtown crew. You guys definitely got me hooked back on Graffiti Man. But, um, big that up. Yeah, he, he introduced me into almost my Berkshire scene without any indication of who these people were, any background knowledge of the Sydney scene. He just shoved me straight into it with all these people. And wow. straight away, there was a few artists, um, a big up pick, um, big up Lazy, um, big up Bocky as well from 567. And there was a few people that I would just go and show my photos of, oh, I, I tried this character this weekend, or I tried mm. this letter star. And, yeah, bro, keep going with that. Or do more of these, or, you know, or m maybe your letters need to have a bit more balance, bro. I think your letters, because they were definitely very janky at this point, you know, massive L's, small A's, <laughs> massive S's, like all over the gaff. And I think- the, <laughs> Don't these, know what you're talking about. Yeah, but these, <laughs> these, these dudes kind of showed me like um, the basic, you know, like this is a, this is how you get your balance. This is how, if you're going to put a character, maybe put your character at the end of your letters rather than two foot away from it where it looks like somebody else has painted it or like <laughs> yeah. half the mile down the road from the letters. Um, but, but those dudes kind of, they <clears throat> taught me what I maybe didn't learn in my teenage years in terms of how to build up a piece, how to blend colours together, how to mix and match different mm. brands to get the desired results that you want. Um, they they gave me my my fundamentals that crew you know and they were the first ones I mean I definitely was the token British kid because everyone used to just love the way that I say shit oh bloody say it again bro say it again you know like <laughs> and I, I still to this day get absolutely ridiculed for calling it mulch because they don't have a fucking clue what mulch is you know what what the fuck is mulch bro you know <laughs> God I love that yeah they don't they don't get that it's called buff in Australia the same as really? the way that our guys buff out there yeah go and get yourself a tab of buff bro but yeah they they. they they don't call it mulch. There's a few words where I know that I get sniggered at for saying the UK version it's, of it. The relationship between Australia and England is so kindred. It's it's I, I love it is. The I think similarities. it's the other country on the planet that they enjoy to take the piss out of themselves as much as we do. You know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think that you'll always, if you find an Aussie friend or you find an Irish friend, you're in but, safe hands. Yeah, in safe hands. Definitely. You are. Yeah. And they've got a zombie over there as well, haven't they? Yeah. So <clears> Zom <throat> OSF, big up Zom OSF. Yeah, big up um, Zom equally as prolific as ours mm. on uh, here in London. Yeah, I know you showed me some flicks. Yeah. He's been, listen, the moment we hooked up, it was like, show me flicks from Australia. My mind is fucking Yeah, I was, uh, I was very jet lagged, very fresh off the boat. And I, I feel like it was one of those things that through being out there and seeing the Sydney scene again, because yeah. I, I was out there in lockdown, um, very short cup trip because that uh, pandemic thing happened yeah, yeah. and I had to get extra diet home. So yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of these guys that I was painting with them, I, I saw all these works that were going up and I saw the scene and then as I was getting back into it, it kind of just died out because mm. of COVID, you know? So I hadn't really seen that much <clears throat> for three years. Mm. And then when I got back there, I mean, big up Crims. I don't think there's a motorway bridge or there's yeah, big a... Big up Crims, big man. Up Crims, there's, a, man. The there's, someone I, there's someone I knew before you showed me the Phoenix. So like, yeah, you know, Crims, uh, I've got a shout out. Um, one of the biggest influences that I had from Sydney as well, Fibs. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it be every commission on every street corner to every new town spot to every like inner west spot to the outsides yeah. the outsides like sort of boroughs of sydney fibs has work everywhere yeah. i've i've never seen a graffiti artist that is just so well covered and, and so well respected in one mm. city as well so i've done yeah, a lot of touring in in australia over the years and one thing that the flavor like melbourne's got their thing sydney though man like uh, i rate them both for equal in different reasons yeah yeah <laughs> but it's Sydney is just so, it kind of has echoes of like Vancouver, but with the, with the intensity of like a Toronto or a New York. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's, it, it has a cleanliness to it, I guess, dare I say it, compared to London. Yeah, and even compared to Melbourne, because yeah. obviously maybe Sydney's considered more the beach city, Melbourne's more yeah. the, the great coffee, great food yeah. and great nightlife, you know, which if they don't have the beaches, they definitely make up for it in other, See, other departments. Yeah. But it's... they. The Sydney style, big up the Sydney style. There is a Sydney there style, is a Sydney bro. Style, like, yeah, you know, real those, talk. The big chunky letters, yeah. the the beautiful bright pinks and purples, yeah. and I mean, it's, it's chunky a, motherfuckers. Yeah. Chunky motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, there's definitely some London writers that have a very similar style, but 
the color palettes that they use there, you, mm. you know that those guys mm. live in the sun. I've, I've never seen such funky <laughs> fresh colors in my life, you know, which for a character guy getting into letters, I think made a really good transition of big time. Maybe if I'm using all these oranges for my character, I can mm. put all those funky oranges mm. in my piece as well. So that was definitely an influence that came from the Sydney style. But um, there was a, a, a big tribute that we did to a guy called Gain 2, Big Up Gain 2. Big Up Gain. Um, sadly passed away recently. Rest but he, was, he was one of those, you know, fume bass. He was he was an, an old school Sydney writer that... Still active. S- still active till, mm. the, till the day that he passed away that was just a local legend. You know, he chatted to everyone. Mm. I had a couple of experiences where he was painting down at Enmore Lane uh, in Newtown, big up Enmore Lane. That's definitely where I cut my teeth. Yeah, um, all these places, but, see? But there, they would never. There was never any animosity where they wouldn't talk to you. They'd walk past. You know, where, where are you from, bro? Who do you know? What do mm. you paint? What are you painting today? Can I see your sketch? You know, it was everyone, no matter what level they were at, were always very interested in who you were. Mm. And I mean, I'm sure I stood out like a sore thumb because I didn't look very Australian yeah. at the time as well, you know. So <laughs> they would kind of be like, who's this English kid? Who are you? Who do you know? And through love, big up love again, he'd introduced me to the right people and the right places that yeah. as soon as I told them that I got my paint in five, six, seven, and as soon as I told them that I painted with these people, mm. they would always give me the time of day to go, okay, let, come over here, bring me your sketch. What are you working with today? What are you thinking about doing for your bottom colours? What are you what you think about doing with your top colours? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of writers that I didn't appreciate because I wasn't from the Sydney scene mm. that years later and going to that documentary and seeing the amount of writers that turned up to go and watch that guy's movie premiere mm. was, and they were all pockets, you know, so it would have been like London. You had North, East, South, West, all in this one cinema in Newtown. Wow. All there to represent this guy. And I've, I mean, one, I've never seen so many graffiti writers together in one place. Really? I mean, when we walked out of the cinema after, the amount of writers that were there signing each other's books and bigging each other up for the last piece that you did. And it was so nice to see all of these different crews from so different good. places yeah. all gelling and all all talking about his life. And A fifth of the neighbourhoods. Yeah, after, it after was, it. it was, man. And I, I was starstruck. I was, I was completely starstruck to be in this opportunity to see all these people together. But it also taught me, like, when you look at the, the backgrounds and the faces in graffiti, mm. um, I mean, I'm not going to name drop who any of these people are, but there was a guy that I was talking to and he was a dentist. And there was another guy that I was there talking to that was a, an accountant. And there was no a guy way. there that was an Uber driver. See, and it doesn't matter. Active members of society. Active members of society, all there talking about letter shapes, letter styles, mm. how good that fill is. Do you remember when he hit that trackside back mm. in 91? And all these people have completely different worlds, different lives, but it brings so many different people that you would That's maybe right. not have met in your regular day to day world. Mm you've met them painting at a Hall of Fame or you've met them at this cinema thing. You know, it's, it, it's crazy how graffiti and the arts in any any way, shape or form, whether it be mm-hmm. DJing or music, brings so many different faces together with a shared love of, of that same thing. You know, it's I, mm. I think it's my favourite thing about graffiti. You know, some of the people that I've been fortunate enough to do a collaboration with or do a piece with, and, you know, they're from Edinburgh and I'm, I'm from this little town, Bracknell in Berkshire. Mm. And I'm thinking, like, how would I know this guy from Edinburgh if it wasn't for the fact that he shouted me on Instagram and was like, oh, All bro, let's, let's go and do a wall whilst you're up here. You know, it's, it's, it's such a brilliant part of graffiti, such a brilliant part totally. of it. Totally, All of that. And also within this creative world we're in, it's the gift that keeps on giving when you could be, well, like, for instance, as dentists and you know, accountants, marketing people, graphic designers, so many different people that have lent what they had as a skill set in graffiti yeah, over to yeah. it and just transferred it over, not literally, of course, we don't graffiti on teeth or anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The point I'm making is... I'm is, sure you um, can make a few bob doing that though. He's doing it, but yeah. <laughs> it never fails to impress me that, you know, if you're in those circles of... of high, higher esteemed establishments, uh, they're, they're ever, like, blown away that... You were a artist once. Yeah, yeah. Because to a lot of you know, if you're an estate agent or something, big up estate agents if yeah, you have big to. Up estate agents. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps still got to get some people I'm houses. Sure, there's yeah. some graffiti estate agents out there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not too many, I hope. But yeah, you know, I say, I hope, I hope there's not too many of those. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, that, actually, that leads me to the gentrification of it all because um, Kings Cross in Sydney, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember going there one time. And a uh, very different landscape to the following time when I went. You know, things have this evolution. Graffiti is incubated in them places. It is. It and is, as, yeah. as humans, we have to elevate too. Or else we get a little bit disgruntled that, you know, the things we nostalgify on yeah, exactly. ain't there no more. Yeah. It's 
quite hard, isn't and, it? And it, it's like your Halls of Fame in London. It, I, I was going past Royal Oak on the way here today and those block rollers mm. are still from when I was 13 getting the tube past Royal Oak, you know, like hanging out the window, seeing who, who was up and what letters yeah, were there. Yeah. That spot's never gone. No. You know, f like places like Unigate, mm. um, Felton Circles. I mean, big up the guys that started the circles, but they're always spots that, in my mind, they're iconic London places that... I know that the scene might have changed and the people that are painting at these places might have changed and evolved a little yeah. bit. But people that I've met in Sydney are like, so I know Leak Street, I mean, I'm that big up pick for the story that you told me. I think they were out painting trains and got away with that and he nearly got uh, nicked for painting someone's garden fence at Leak Street down the bottom, you know? So he, he had his oh, own- Oh, around there, I know. Yeah, 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 he had his own story. And he was like, you know, I came over from Australia to paint trains there and the guy takes me down Leak Street. I got away with the panel, nearly got nicked for painting the fucking legal walls. So it's, <laughs> I know for a lot of them, they, they know the Leak Streets, they know the Felton Circles because they're iconic London mm, spots. Mm. The same way that to an American skateboarder, South Bank is an iconic London spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to pinch myself every time I go away and come back that, yeah, these are on our doorstep, man. These, these yeah. are like sometimes a 15, 20 minute train journey and I'm I'm at Unigate or I'm at the, the Winner's Triangle Hall of Fame, you know, and these places yeah. have been there for 20, 25, 30 years, some of them, you know. Yeah, but, man, and I, I might just add value to that. It's like, it's one thing, you know, having a regular hoarding spot, mm. but those things, they by default disappear. They come and they go, yeah. But when it comes to places like Royal Oak, Leak Street, and so it's like, Okay, I'm not. I'm not a fucking Leak Street fan. I'll be really honest with you. Mm. Um, and East London just does my head in. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, use them or lose them. Yeah, exactly. it's the saying. So yeah, just, it's like I mean, even like coming up here to see you today, I'm, I'm torn between whether I'm going to go to South Bank or Leak Street after and go and put something up on the way home mm, to mm, make sure I get the most out of my travel card. Mm, but um, mm, mm, mm. it's one of those spots that like I think a lot of writers don't like painting Leak Street because it's so busy. You've got so many people that are going to tap on the shoulder and talk to you. Mm. But to see some of your favourite writers work, it's one yeah, of the places just, to go, you know? And sky high for yeah, starters. Yeah, sky high wow. for starters, man. Every time you walk down and you see those big block yeah. letters and then he's done like three characters in the middle of it as well, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'll probably paint in about 45 minutes once I've walked down the tunnel yeah. and taken all these in for a little bit, you know? Yeah. But it, again, they're inspiring places for someone that's mm. trying to get up or trying to get their name out there to yeah. see these people in the flesh, you know? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a lot of writers that... A lot of London writers that maybe don't venture out to Berkshire as much. So for you to be able to see those pieces in the flesh, mm. we've always had to travel into London and come to Leak Street and come to those kind of spots. Hundred you know, percent. So. Other other names that spring to mind down at Leak Street is Ink, um, Tizer. Yeah, big up Tizer, man. Again, for the characters, what yeah. an inspiration, bro. Yeah. But anyone that can paint characters and letters that good is like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, just. Big up Tizer, man, big up Tizer. And, and the SMO crew as well. Like, oh, yeah, for real. Just the productions and stuff that they put down there. Is, they really do, man. Yeah. I rate that. But yeah, they're... Uh, they do Stockwell quite a bit. So Stockwell Hall of Fame. Yeah, big up Stockwell as well, man. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping to venture big there up. for the first time this year. So, um, yeah, if there's any talk guys out there. No, I've never been Whoa, to Stockwell, man. Oh, yeah. Again, for us, Berkshire, like, sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating going up to the London spot. So um, it's always nice to have someone to go there to paint with, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> The so, gateway, the gateway drug. Yeah, the gateway drug for sure, man. What's the future, my brother? Tell me the future. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say at the moment, uh, I mean, I've been very fortunate the last three years, um, some people have taken sort of interest in the character side. Um, mm. I'm, I'm not in the commission so much as, you know, I, I don't want to go into that work of being a, a commercial artist. Mm. I still want to be a graffiti artist that does commercial bits on the side to mm. get my paint and to be able to pay the bills. Um, but I would say that I'm in a contract at the moment where I'm doing some office installations across Europe and uh, mm. across Southeast Asia as well coming up. Um, big, big things, baby. So, yeah, I've been very, very fortunate to have such a great opportunity that it pays the bills, gets me the paint in to go and meet the homies and go and do walls in between and, mm. and keep active with the graffiti as well, you know. So I've been very, very blessed in that department. But I'd just say my three-year plan is to meet as many artists and paint as many walls and collaborate with as many people as possible. Um, I want to do some UK festivals this year as well and maybe start venturing into that sort of corner as well mm -hmm. and maybe getting some characters out there for a few more people to see. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just to paint as much as possible, man. It's the thing that makes me the most happy in life, yeah. you know. So whether it is for a job or whether it is with, you know, with the homies going out mm -hmm. for the day and putting up a production or planning a piece is graffiti, 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 graffiti. You know, I just, I, I love it to my core, you know. It's just, mm -hmm. it's the one thing that keeps me smiling every day, keeps me enthusiastic, keeps me positive about life. And I know for a lot of people that struggle with mental health, it's the thing that you could be having the shittest day and mm. someone puts a, a six pack of cans in my hand and goes, you know, come and put up a dub and within an hour I feel better about life. So Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, 
in that truth. Grabbing a mic for me is just free falling. Yeah, it's just it's, it's, it's where you, it's where the said. real you kind of just yeah. gets to transcend, and yeah. all the bullshit and fog yeah. that is day to day life yeah. just kind of takes a backseat oh, for a second, doesn't it? You know, it's bliss. It's so. bliss. Well, there you go. The international man of mystery inside the house from. Uh, from Oz to Berkshire. Berkshire crew represent. They got the Berkshire crew. And um, just on the end, uh, just wrap it up. I, I was going to spend half the podcast bigging people up, you know, but <laughs> big up the KDS crew. Big up T, uh, TZC as well. Big up KMC. Um, big up all the local legends. Dime, Jewel, Dash, uh, Mac, Atcross, Baps. Uh, some, of, some of the guys that maybe don't get a shout out as much, like Pa, Sipa, um, Phaser, all the guys that are putting in work, getting out there at the moment. Nice. Um, and in my crew, big up Cola, Temper, Rocket, all the boys that keep me painting every weekend, big up Congo and Wask as well, um, tracks, all, all the guys that just, every time I've had a little dip and maybe I needed that phone call from someone to get me out of bed and get me out on a wall mm. on a Saturday morning, you, you're the guys that do it for me. So thank you very much. How man. do you I remember all these that. names in one shot? That's amazing. <laughs> right, the games. Well, it was our Fashion Killer Killer podcast. So it's right. <laughs> hey, listen, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither did they. All right, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, people. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Take off, bro. <laughs>